Hello and welcome once again. So I'm back with you for my ASP.NET Core 3.1 playlist. And today I'm going to discuss about model binding in ASP.NET Core 3.1. So in this tutorial today, I shall be covering what is model binding and the basics with some code snippet. Now, here is a code snippet from a action result type on the pet class which is get by id and here we have got a url which is like this local https colon localhost colon port number my local port number which will differ in your version in your machines slash api slash pets slash one question mark dogs only equals true now given this action method and this request url a few things can be observed. First of all, let's see the steps performed by the model binding in the previous code. Once assuming that the routing system has selected the action page, action or the page handler method, action method in a MVC or a web API and a page handler method in razor pages. Now it first looks into the parameter in the get by ID action method, which is an ID that is of integer type. And then it looks through the request and finds the ID in the route data. Okay, ID equals one in the route data and it converts the string one in the request to integer one. It then looks into the second parameter in the get by ID action method, which is a Boolean dogs only. And it looks through the request and finds a term dogs only whose value is true and because this engine does not, uh, it doesn't take into account this is case insensitive. So dogs only, which has got a value of true in a query string, will be equated to the dogs only um, in the get by ID method parameter. Okay. So next, it converts the string to the string true to the boolean true. And finally, the framework accesses the get by ID method and passes one for ID as the first and true for dogs only as the second parameter. And again, so we have got this request. If you look into the um, these callouts, you will find again, given this request and this code, again, we'll see that it looks into the first parameter in the get by ID action, which is an ID of int type and it looks through the request which is this and finds id equals one in the route data and it converts this this is the string because url is always a string uh, and it converts the string one in the request to integer one that's automatically done by the model binding engine and then it looks into the second parameter of the get by id action method which is a boolean it's declared as boolean type dogs only and then it looks through this incoming request and it finds the dogs only word whose value is true in the query string. And this is then mapped to the Boolean uh, dogs only, this dogs only, because this is case insensitive. And it then converts the string, this is the string true to the Boolean true. And then the frame, framework accesses the get by ID method and passes one for ID as the first and true for dogs only as a second parameter. And that's in a nutshell how it works. Okay, now let's switch over to the Visual Studio and uh, do it. I mean, I have got the code already in action and see what I'm telling, okay, by sending a request like this. So over to Visual Studio. Now over to the Visual Studio. Now, how I created this solution and this project model binding validation, it is from a Microsoft documentation GitHub source, but I will tell you in the next lecture how I created this project and got the code from the Microsoft repository. Okay, so let's run this application by clicking this IIS Express button. So you have got this model binding validation application. Now let me browse to this URL that I have explain to you so you have got this response back you know id equals one breed equals coli name equals fido and pet type equals zero so where does it come from let's see in a nutshell 
and switching over to Visual Studio again. So here, pets in memory store, it comes from this pets in memory store, which is a static list. Okay, so static list of pet pets in memory store. So let's go to um, pets in memory store, click on go to definition. Okay, so you have got this new pet breed equals coli id equals one name equals fido and pet type equals pet type dot dog okay so how does it work in a nutshell what happens is that you know var pet is a variable it is assigned its value dynamically in compile time so pets in memory store dot first or default so the first value or the default value if there is no first value in that memory store it it is operated upon with this predicate p goes to this is lambda expression so p dot id so id is passed from here get by id first parameter through the model binding engine and if it is equal equal to the id so pets in memory store dot id is equal to the passed in id and this condition is also satisfied so not dogs only or p dot pet type equals pet type dot dog so this both these conditions are satisfied so you get a variable pet and then it returns the pet okay from the pets in memory store which is a in memory collection so controllers and razor pages work with data that comes from http requests okay so when i say controllers it includes the mvc controllers as well as web api controllers and model binding automates this process. The model binding system retrieves data from various sources such as route data, form fields and query strings and provides the data to controllers and razor pages in method parameters and public properties. It also further converts string data to .NET types and updates properties of complex types. And the term model binding refers to the feature of ASP.NET Core controllers and razor pages that allow, allows us to map request information to name parameters in action methods or page handler methods, action methods in uh, controllers and page handler methods in uh, razor pages. Okay. And every single request that hits the server in an ASP.NET Core application is served with a response by executing an action namely a public method or a controller or page model class okay so where does this data at all comes from in the http request we have briefly seen that it comes from several sources now here are them in more expansion in slightly detailed mode so route data is one of the sources which may provide a record key and posted form fields which may provide values for the model properties and request body, of course, for controllers that have the API controller attribute and query string parameters. 